Oregon's offense is as high speed and high powered as ever. Mariota has that speed, touchdown! Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown! Marcus Mariota leads an array of weapons intent on creating a special season. The Ducks come to Boulder. Can Colorado derail Oregon? The challenge is next. Well, it is a bright, warm fall afternoon at Folsom Field in Boulder. It is family weekend on the Colorado campus, and it's Pac-12 football for you presented by Chase. The Colorado Buffaloes at home hosting the number two Oregon Ducks. And welcome on Pac-12 Networks along with Glenn Parker and Drea Aven, Ted Robinson. Yeah, it's now Oregon is kind of like a traveling show. When they come to town, you better be ready, especially on defense. And, Glenn, you've worked to me long enough. You know now that I think third down is the most misused stat in football. Oregon does an amazing job of rendering third down irrelevant. Well, absolutely they do. And, and Mike McIntyre told us about this. He, he said, listen, all it is is first and second, first and second score. Look at the yards per play for this team. A, a unbelievable 8.2 per second down. That is absolutely efficiency on your offense. They rarely get to third down, a key to the game for the Buffs. Oregon has scored 31 touchdowns, 31 touchdowns in four games. They have an array of weapons, but their primary offensive weapon won't play today. With more on that, let's go down to the sideline. Andrea Avent. Hi, Ted. Yeah, DeAnthony Thomas is a prolific scorer, an intricate part of this Oregon offense. But the nation was stunned because he was injured last week in the very first drive of the game against Cal. He slipped trying to make a play, and he was on crutches for the second half of the game. But Coach Helfrich told me, hey, he's still here today, even though he's not playing, because the guy's a leader, he's competitive, and he wants to be out there cheering his team on. And Oregon officials told me that it's day-to-day -day with him. He still cannot run. He cannot cut. So they're hoping maybe he'll be back next week. But at this time, they don't want to make a definitive statement on that ten. And another weapon also out today, Colt Lyerla, talented tight end for the Ducks. Not here, coach's decision, second game that he will not play for Oregon this year. Colorado side, new coaching staff, rebuild effort. Good thing, though, Glenn, this year they have a playmaker healthy. Yeah, Paul Richardson, their wideout is, is healthy. He's got great speed, the ability to get off the line of scrimmage because of his quicks. He's got a real challenge, though. He's got some quarterbacks going against him that can rough him up and be physical. So if he can get free, if he can get off the line of scrimmage, he can get into some space. That's a great weapon for Connor Wood and this Buffalo offense. But the theme really is that Richardson is the one playmaker for Colorado. Oregon has a barrel full. We saw last week Braylon Addison two punts return for touchdowns in the same game. They never did tackle. Colorado will try when we come back. And by Chase, so you can. The signature moment of every CU football game at Boulder. Ralphie leading the charge on the Folsom Field. And it is family weekend. The families of CU students all making the track here. A buzz all around Boulder this weekend. So they're hoping that this beautiful football afternoon helps highlight the weekend. And there's a challenge for Mike McIntyre, the first year coach and his team in the rebuild. And it's any team that's down as Colorado's been. You always are challenged on special teams. And it really comes into play when you face a team like Oregon. Mike McIntyre. A tremendous job, three years at San Jose State, got them into a national ranking and a bowl victory last year. Colorado hired him. And now the Buffaloes and an onside kick to start the game, but the ball took a big hop right into the midsection of Tyson Coleman for Oregon. Well, that is one way to try and steal possession, Glenn. Love the thought. That's what you've got to do if you're Colorado. You come out, you get aggressive, you try to steal possessions, you try to do anything you can to get that mental edge early. Love the thought. They just didn't get the bounce that they were hoping for. And I, I have to agree with you. I think it's a great play. If you're Colorado, why not? This goes to a theme we talked about last week as Marcus Mariota hands off on first down and Byron Marshall's piled up as 
Colorado defensed that on their right side well. Josh Tupo off the line. Freshman linebacker Addison Gillum as we see the numbers for Mariota. Completion percentage down. That's a significant part of his pass game this year. Now Derek Webb showed up in the gap fast. Now Mariota throws on the run and it's dropped. Josh Huff on the drop, and that's something Glenn Oregon has talked to us about last week. As well, it's part of Mariota's completion percentage. Is he, he has had a decent amount like that that should have been caught. Yeah, right through his hands. But Colorado's got exactly what they want to do get to third down. Oregon hasn't faced a lot of them. Must be a lift for the Buffs if they could survive an onside kick to start the game. Third down, Oregon, three receivers to the right, the wide side. Mariota going to the field side. Now he's got a man breaking open, but he overthrows Addison. And that's hard, because that side of the field, Addison's turning back, looking right into the sun. Yeah, Kenneth Crawley. <laughs> Kenneth Crawley, the DB came, he slipped, then tried to gain ground. And by that time, Mariota was scrambling. That ball. Would have been a tough catch because of the sun, but just overthrown. Yeah, overthrown. But you could see Addison's reaction when he spun and looked back on the far side of the field, the top of your picture. You turn back to your picture right, you're looking square into the sun. So the punt by Darum, or excuse me, the punt by Oregon goes out of bounds inside the 20 as we look at the Eastern's difference makers with the Colorado Buffs on offense. Yeah, Jack Harris left tackle. He's got to get movement, he's got to protect. Michael Adkins. Running back came on strong for them last week. He's a freshman who's got to make an impact. Now up front, you really look at all of the guys, but Kelly Ikipi and Lacombo as a linebacker, these guys win the line of scrimmage. I think the key to Oregon's success this year will rest squarely on that front seven, but more on the inside three. They win their territory. So Colorado operating first down goal with a big ball for Richardson. And how about that? Connor Wood connects with his big man for a huge first play. Richardson behind Terrence Mitchell, 56 yards. The hard thing with Richardson is he's got the quicks to get into space. If you don't bump him, if you allow him to release, he has got so much speed down the field. The ball spotted right on the 30, so officially a 55-yard pass play. And Colorado took advantage there of having no son to deal with. Richardson had no problem looking back to catch the ball. Freshman running back Michael Adkins gets little, if nothing at all, and a flag on the play. Yeah, in that area of illegal formation or offsides, one of the two. Somebody didn't get up on the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation. Offense. Five men in the backfield, number 77, five-yard penalty, Maine's first down. Correction, that penalty will be declined, second down. Yeah, so Oregon happy to take the no gain on the defense. Richardson had an 82-yarder earlier this year for a touchdown, so 55 here, his second longest pass play of the year. But what a change for Colorado. And we saw last week how in miserable weather in Eugene, Glenn Cal just completely melted down in the first quarter, never gave themselves a chance. Colorado trying for a different story here as Wood hits Kyle Slavin. Well, let's take a look. Richardson on your outside. He breaks free. It's a simple go route. I like the fact Connor Wood puts air under that ball and allows Richardson to use real estate to get it. Terrence Mitchell is going to have to be physical right up on the line with Richardson. Now, what they've done here, yes. Richardson's off the ball. Give him some room to work. A little bunch. We talked about this yesterday with Colorado's coordinator, Brian Lindgren, trying to get Richardson off the line. Ooh, and that ball through the hands and incomplete of Nelson Spruce, and that will leave Mike McIntyre with a fourth down decision. Yeah, I like the, I like third uh, second down where they went to the tight end. This is a drag route. It's got to be out in front of them a little bit. You're moving very fast relative to your quarterback. That shallow and side to side. Got to get it to him. And here's where Oregon so impacts the opponent. You know that a kicking the field goal is not going to dent Oregon. So Colorado will go for it. Richardson at the bottom of your picture on fourth down. And a little out throw. They 
went to the short side of the field, away from Richardson to Nelson Spruce. So Colorado makes really what is the smart call here, Glenn, and they cash in. Colorado can play loose. No one's expecting anything from them. That's one thing Coach McIntyre talked about. They can come out and go for it on fourth down. They can try the onside kick. It's a, they're in the driver's seat as far as their emotions. So now red zone for Colorado. They've not done well in red zone offense early in the year. Blitz coming. Unblocked man. Wood does a nice job. And Wood does a terrific job there as he avoided the unblocked rusher, Tony Washington, and then just airmailed the ball to get an incompletion. Tony Washington, a two-point, standing over the tight end. Tight end, easy release. He brings the pressure. Connor Wood is a junior from Houston. He went to Texas originally, first year of college at Texas, transferred here last year. Jordan Webb, who started most of last year for the Buffs, is out with an injury, not dressed today. Michael Atkins, a freshman with a big game in Corvallis last Saturday, is the running back behind Wood. Wood trying to get away again and throws one back in the middle of the field and he got away with a terrible throw. This is an example of a quarterback finding pressure. He didn't have to go anywhere. His offensive lineman did a great job of giving him a pocket. Look in front of him. There is no pressure, yet he moves, and he moves into it. He finds the pressure. Now he's forced to scramble throw a cross-body throw back into traffic. That's where decision-making has to come in for Connor Wood. Be happy where you're at, move small, so you can make any throw on the field. Good fortune for Wood there, that ball was incomplete. Terrence Mitchell of Oregon, Spruce of Colorado colliding. Third down here, Christian Powell, the running back. And snap, picked up nicely. And then Wood's pass is not held. He delivered that ball to Powell. Powell had a hit delivered on him by Rodney Harvick. Well, early on, Colorado's taking chances, but I, they've gone now over the middle two, three times. I think they're, they're finding something with, with coverage, with their formation. They want to get some space in the middle of the field. So now on this fourth down, a little different theme, fourth and ten. You play the percentages the, the, yes, at some point. The field goal here becomes a smarter call, 33-yard kick. And it is good, so Colorado gets points. Will Oliver drives it through, and the Buffaloes score first. Well, after decent action in the first three minutes, we'll get to our Mitsubishi Motors keys to the game. Glenn? Hey, Ducks got to dominate the line of scrimmage. They've got great defense, offensive line play. That's where they should be winning this game. And hey, Buffs, got to keep up with that scoring pace. Got to get them to third down. Got to make, make some mistakes. But we all know you got to keep up with Oregon. Will drive this kick and take advantage of the altitude. Bang it right at the back of the end zone. So an Oregon touchback. And now with the Ducks on offense, a look at our insurance difference makers. Byron Marshall running back, big game last week. And Keenan Lowe, great perimeter blocker, but also a wide receiver can make things happen. And how about Chidero Uzo Deribe? He's got to get some pressure on the quarterback. And Derek Webb already showed up the very first play of the game, running through the gap and turning the running back back into the pile. The very young Colorado defense, for the most part, those are two veteran stalwarts who've been through a lot of, well, a lot of experiences here at Boulder. Has it all been great for them? Is Byron Marshall? And that's an understatement, I guess you could say. Byron Marshall on the carry, but I'll say one thing for Colorado: we had a chance to talk to their senior Derek Webb yesterday. Mariota, it's Johnny Munt, the freshman tight end, playing in the place of Lyurla today. And it's an Oregon first. And here's where Colorado Glenn came right out and said, this is the key for us on defense right now. Experienced guys, young guys, whatever, get in the right position. Got to have your alignment. Got to know your assignment. Oh, Mariota threw a ball that should have been picked. And Derek Webb may have been so shocked he couldn't catch it. I don't think Derek Webb's ever been that open in his life. Mariota, this would have been his first interception in a long while. And there, you know, it's it's a cliche, but there is a reason defenders are defenders. Yeah. Wow. Derek Webb, and we're talking about one of the challenges. Mariano gives it off there. A nice play by the other 
Stalwart, Yuzo Deribe on that defensive front. You think, Glenn, that Yuzo Deribe, Webb came here. They've played for three different head coaches. Nobody goes to college football expecting that kind of change. And it's so hard on your football development because every coach has a different way of talking to you. Techniques might remain the same, but your, the language you learn from the coaching yes. points to the calls on the field change. It stunts your development as a player. It's very tough on you. And that's what we talked with Derek Webb about that. And uh, Jack Harris, their offensive tackle, same boat. Guys who've been here that were recruited by Dan Hawkins, played for John Embry, and now for McIntyre. Catch by Addison, Oregon first down. Mariotto with a big post to Huff. And Oregon's inside the five. And that's a play we saw Oregon try to throw a lot last week in the horrible weather. Mariotto perfect here, Glenn. Yeah, he's got an inside receiver. Safety steps up on the fake. There's no safety there for, for the pressure inside when he runs that seam. It's an easy throw for Mariota. And Oregon banging it down there to the two-yard line goes Marshall. Just looks like just inside the two. Well, Marietta faked out Webb. Now Gillum, the freshman, forces a pass, and it's almost caught and nearly acrobatic. And Grabbed by Addison on the far side. But it wouldn't have counted the official through his hat. And you'll take a look. He went out of bounds and came back in. Watch the official's hat right on the ground, right at the feet of Crowley. So almost an acrobatic catch would have been beautiful, but it wouldn't have counted. Boy, did Mariota put a move on Webb in the open field there? That's breaking Ooh. somebody's ankle. Wow. Right there now. Well, we'll take a look at that one again when we get a chance. Third down. Marshall inside, no. That's Mariota keeping it, yes. How <laughs> about that? That's how good the play fake can be. And Mariota, who has been a touchdown machine, mostly through the air, scores one on the ground. The Ducks come right back on their second possession. And now they will run it for two on a unique play and easily barrel it in. Well, yeah, in order to get that two, you got to have a touchdown. Marcus Mariota runs the read option on the back side as good as anybody. Everybody bites. He pulls it in, and they've got an early 8-3 lead over the bus. ton of Duck fans, great Oregon representation here in Boulder. I'm glad I saw that touchdown going to break because I didn't see it the first time. A little slide of hand got us all. Great play fakes. Ball fakes are such a huge part of the read option quarterbacking. And Mariota with a gem there. Got a kickoff here. Ryan Severson deep for Colorado. Go down that. And here is another part. This becomes custom for Oregon. Oh, this is just unique. Two point play. Right here is your guy, Farrell Brown, in the backfield. Now, they know they've got numbers and angles. It's not just numbers. They get a, an ace block, which is a triple team to a backer that springs him right through a gap and in. Well designed. Yes. Drew Howell, the long snapper, just shovels the ball laterally to Farrell Brown and plowed in. That was easy. And now. Colorado finds out one of the challenges of playing Oregon, one of the many. When you get a chance against Oregon, you must score touchdowns. Connor Wood. And Wood, Wood took a big hit as he got right to the sideline. And he'll be out for no gain. When you're playing Oregon, you know they have speed on you. So running horizontally or even throwing the ball horizontally is tough because they're going to cover that ground. When you see speed, you have to go right at it. That's why I liked early they were trying to go over the middle of the field. The Colorado on that big pass play to Richardson had a red zone opportunity, did not score a touchdown out of it. Reverse, Atkins hands it off. Richardson wants to throw it. And Colorado, D.D. Goodson. Look at him go! He is gone! 75 yards, what speed from Goodson! Oh, 
Well, we said they could play loose, didn't we? There is no pressure. They can pull out all the stops. Reverse pass for a touchdown. Nice. Well designed, too. D.D. Goodson, Junior Rosenberg, Texas. That's only the second pass reception of his career. And it comes from Paul Richardson. The first throw of Richardson's career. That's a 75-yard lottery ticket. Well, definition of playmaker, Paul Richardson catching a 55-yarder on the first Colorado possession and then throwing a 75-yard pass. And D.D. Goodson opened our eyes with that speed to finish that play. Whoa, haven't seen that around here lately. We've only played five minutes and 25 seconds, by the way. A lot of action crammed in. Let's go back to the touchdown and, and the way it was designed. I want you to pay attention to these two defenders who will bite up on all the play action. And then this route over the top to drag a defender out so that the man who comes off Goodson is wide open. Because of the play action to get the safeties out, and then that dragging route to get the other defender away, it opened right up. And then some great blocking downfield. Mike Nelson Spruce was involved there, helping secure that last block to help Goodson get home with it. Mariota fires to Addison. And Addison uses his moves and speed to make a first down play out of that to the 41. Oregon is the team that piles up the explosive plays. They've had two big ones go against them in this first quarter. Yeah, and, and they're one of those teams that doesn't give up a lot of plays over 20 yards. They have two big ones already. Marshall, big hole. And Marshall into the secondary before Jared Bell. Right, right there is a difference between Oregon of last year and Oregon this year. Byron Marshall looked for contact once he was he knew that people had angles. He didn't run from it. He didn't try to get to the outside. He went right to it. Last year, the year before, guys ran away, and that's how teams were able to beat them. 17-yard run. Flag down. Looked like some motion on Oregon there. Pass. Into that sun field again, intended for Farrell Brown. Misfires. Judah Parker, a little pressure. They're starting to get, get a little pressure up to Mariota now. And that's your down front. That's without bringing extra guys. Illegal motion, offense. Five yard penalty. Makes first down. That was Addison, the wide receiver one. at the bottom of your screen that had a bad move on the, uh, on the start there. Mark Helfrich, who of course, is an Oregon, Oregonian. We laughed last, we laughed, we talked to him the other day, we laughed about last Saturday. I said, that was a Coos Bay night, wasn't it? He said, reminded him of every high school game he'd ever played. <laughs> and much different weather, perfect weather today. It's altitude. Marshall on the carry. Helfrich knows altitude well. He was an offensive coordinator here for three years when Dan Hawkins was the head coach. And so first child, Mark Helfrich and his wife, their first child was born here in Boulder. So this has a, some emotion for him coming back. Chip Kelly is the one who brought him from Boulder to Eugene. Mariota's done a tremendous job when he's kept the ball early in the season. He gets into the second level there before Woodson Greer drops it. And, and credit Woodson Greer. He doesn't bite on the play away. So he's there to force Mariota back into all the help. So here's again Oregon into a third down. They had a rare third down touchdown on their last drive. No, third down here, and it's swallowed up. That's freshman linebacker Addison Gillum. He is a first-year player, taking over right in the middle of the Colorado D. Yeah, and Josh, uh, Josh Tupo right there wins his battle. Josh Tupo playing inside, winning the gap battle on the edge. That's what they have to do against the double teams and the zone blocking. They've got to win at the LOS. And Colorado on fourth, or excuse me, Oregon on fourth. 
And Mariota threw it up there, hoping Farrell Brown could make a play. Jared Bell deflects it. And Colorado holds. Great defense by Jared Bell. Trailing. He trails him across the field. He's on your right side and then launches at the proper time to get up over the bigger tight end. That is phenomenal defense. Well, Colorado is doing, and it's halfway through the first quarter, but they're doing what you must do. One, they're playing, as you say, Glenn, they're, they're rolling a little bit. I mean, they're taking some shots. They're rolling a little bit, playing with some emotion on defense to at least stay in the game. And taking chances. And now they just stole a possession from Morgan. Got him a pistol. Ward lines up, fires for Richardson. And almost the sparkling one-handed grab against the coverage of Ifo Ekpreolamu. That was a great throw. I think Richardson hesitates right at the end. Let's keep an eye on Richardson. See if he doesn't break stride. Right there. He's about to break stride. Right there. And that is just the difference that keeps him from getting the ball. Well, watch right here. You'll watch a break in the stride. And that's the difference in a long game. Christian Powell now the back. He was the lead back most of last year. Colorado told us they wanted to try to get him into more fullback-like scenarios. They think that's his strength. Powell there racked up for a short game. That's pretty good eyesight for an old lineman to know he broke stride down there, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, he's moving fast. I yeah. kind of caught that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all the officials stopping things here. One official talking to the referee, Michael Batlin. During the prior play, the clock did not start. Timer, please reset the game clock to seven minutes and three seconds. All right, so the, a rarity in this day, you get a breather between plays. <laughs> Third and nine coming for Colorado. This is tough. You have to figure out where you win if you're Colorado. In space with Paul Richardson or in space with an option route from your back. Richardson up top against Troy Hill. Ah, but Oregon collapses the line, and this time Wood does not get away with a bad decision. Terrence Mitchell with the interception, but that's pure Oregon. Glenn collapsed the puck. They brought more than Colorado could block. They forced the running back, Tony Jones, to decide. And once the ball comes out, that's why the, the DBs at, at Oregon are so good. Their, their defense allows them to be aggressive. They can either get at the line and shake people up, or they can take chances. That ball was up there. He was in good position and was able to get the ball. And like you said, a bad decision with the football again by Connor Wood. Second interception for Terrence Mitchell. Tyler Marshall trying to bounce, and Oregon doesn't let him escape. Strung it out nicely. Freshman Gillum again was leading the surge. What Gillum does is leverage the edge. He stays outside the block. He makes the back continue down the line of scrimmage. And then when help gets there, it pushes it right to him. With Oregon, you have to leverage each edge so that you keep guys from bouncing wider. Second and 10. Mariota has one knocked down at the line. That was Justin Solis. Got his hands up, knocked this ball down. See, they try to cut him. He's there. Oh, I take that back. That was a nice job by Nate Monsu getting his hands on him. If you're going to be an offensive lineman, particularly short at 5'11", like Monagreg is, if you cut, you better make sure you get their hands down. Mariota, late pitch to Huff. So using Josh Huff there on the option. And a first down run. This is where Oregon has so many different tools, whether it's the, the zone read, but this is really, this is outside option with the fake read on the back side. So now they, they keep piling it on you. Running straight ahead, Marshall. And, and Glenn, that's a great point you raised because look, this is a team that's playing without two 
premier offensive players today, DeAnthony Thomas and Cole Lyra. And Cole Lyra was one of the better tight ends around. And you don't sense, yes, they miss them, but they're not really handicapped. No, and, and what they do, you know, I, I talk about simplicity with them because they have a couple of base concepts. But they're as good as anybody at having enough options to Colorado. build upon all those concepts. And they do that very well. All right, so Colorado just took a timeout on defense. It's a 30 second charge. I don't know if that came out. from Kent Bear, the defensive coordinator, perhaps up top in the booth. You know, next week on the Pac 12 Networks, we'll have a couple of games for you. The Stanford Cardinal have a challenge tonight as Washington visits Palo Alto next Saturday. Stanford goes to Salt Lake City and these Colorado Buffaloes to Tempe against Arizona State. Kickoff, uh, excuse me, the pregame kicks off at 2 p.m. next Saturday on Pac 12 Networks. Excited, looking forward to going to Salt Lake City. I enjoy going up to the, the big U. Well, it's amazing. Utah gave UCLA a real scare the other night, even with six picks. Can't, can't ever fathom that would happen. No, I took the game to the last play. To be in the game after five interceptions. Yeah. Thomas Tyner. Ah, oh, Thomas Tyner runs it. And. Boy, just when you thought he was gone, a nice trip at the last second by Chidobe Awuze out of the secondary. And Tyner's down after a 22-yard game. Farrell Brown, tight end that side, got the hook. That allowed the tackle to get up to the second level. There's no edge player at this point. And off he goes. Tyner to the two. And we talk about the red zone and what that difference means. Colorado had one early in the game here, Glenn. They've had six red zone trips this year, Colorado, and only one touchdown. Oregon here, you think this is almost a slam dunk. And they do score. They're two for two. It's tough to win games with that percentage in the red zone. Two for two today, Oregon is Thomas Tyner. The highly regarded freshman running back from Oregon. Fifth touchdown already. Now Colorado has to scramble here and be ready about the potential of another shot at two. Now Oregon brings their alignment in place. Matt Wogan. Another freshman. Got more of the kicking as the game went on last week at Eugene. And Wogan boots through the extra point. Here we go. Hey, give it to your horse. You pull your backside guard around and, and, and get those three yards easy. And that's what their offensive line does. Now, the interception, at least you see the pressure in the face. You can't throw this back football. If you're going to throw it, it's got to be out of bounds or in the ground. He throws it up for grabs. Easy interception that time for Terrence Mitchell. All right, our cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light shows the Oregon takeaway turnover margin the most it's the number in football that most closely correlates to winning and the Ducks look at already where they are plus 11 this is only game five you know and, and it goes back to what you said earlier Chad that offenses feel like they have to keep up and, and we mentioned it they have to score for score well you know, if that's your mentality then you're going to take those chances and you're going to think I have to make this throw and that leads into the turnover battle that that Oregon always seems to win well, of course, we're at altitude here, and that means kicking kickoffs should carry. And we wouldn't think a ton of kick returns in this day. Well, we're going to have one here. Higher kick. Severson's bringing this out. Severson's running with it. Oh, and a real big trip up by Troy Hill. As Severson was about to get the left sideline. Troy Hill had to make this play, and in his mind, I know he was thinking it because he got caught out of position. He flew up into the pile too fast, then had to sprint to get to that edge, and he was thinking, if I don't make this, they're all going to be on me. And a big open gash, run to daylight, and right there, that's a saving tackle. Ryan Severson with almost, still a good return, but almost a big one. So now Colorado. The turn of the guy they told us yesterday they think the downhill runner is Christian Powell, 230 pound sophomore. He bangs for seven on first down. He's, he's their guy they like in pass protection. 
He's the guy that'll step up and take on a linebacker. Oh, nice hole. And Colorado opening up a big gap for Powell, and he pushes the ball out to the 46. Hey, zone blocking. You get a double team on the front side, a double team on the back side. If your backer overextends either way, the next level is wide open, and it cuts between your guard and your center. So Colorado establishing a little bit of a run. And they got Richardson slot to the top. Slide two tight ends that way, too. And Powell runs it all the way down near the Oregon 40. They had one shot at him. They had a little run blitz off that heavy side, but Oregon didn't get the tackle. I saw this in film. I asked the coach, and I said, it had to be a mistake. They're going to pull here, and they're going to let this guy come free and wrap. And you'd say, that guy will make the tackle every time. There comes the puller. He ignores him. They do not trap that outside guy, and they get yardage. Yeah. It looks like a mistake on film, but they were, they run it. That's amazing. You're right. He is an unblocked player, has a clean shot at the tackle, and doesn't make the doesn't tackle. Doesn't make it. And they end up, end results a 12-yard gain. And there he is again, the same, uh, same scheme, different result. Tackle oh. made for a loss. And it's at Cray Olamu. <laughs> Two big-time corners here in this Oregon defense, Ekpre Olamu and Mitchell. Nick Aliotti, the veteran D coordinator, told us last week that people last year were throwing away from Mitchell at Ekpre Olamu. This year, Ekpre Olamu's improved so much they're going back and forth more at Mitchell. Wood got hit there. Took a pop as he threw it. Yeah, Derek Malone Jr. came flying in free. He's the backside backer. They run middle cross dog. He runs right around the right guard, Daniel Bunyer, and gets right in the face of Connor Wood. And now CU backed up into a long third. It's tough if you're the front side guard and your, your backer goes away to expect the backer coming your way. That's a tough pickup for, that, for an offensive line. On a long third down, Powell gets only a couple. And now, Colorado offense, Mike McIntyre and OC Brian Lindgren got a bad set of options here because they have fourth down, but they need 10. They're not anywhere near field goal range. A punt, what does that gain you? This is the thing we talked about last week, Glenn. When you play against Oregon, you seriously have to think how wise in most situations would it be to ever punt the ball? Yeah, it, you know, if you, if you put it into the end zone, you're, you're only going to get 22 yards of offense or defense out of it. That's their second charge time. So you, wrote, you, start, you start going against your thoughts. This well, do we give them that? Do we just say we'd rather take the shot at fourth down and, and not worry about 20 yards because they're going to move it anyways? So second timeout for Colorado in the first half gives us a moment to look at the road to the Pac-12 championship brought to you by UPS again you see how really early it's early still but the north is looking pretty tough yeah when you look at Stanford Oregon and Washington all good teams all playing well and Oregon State after the anomaly to start the season against Eastern Washington has come on very strong Sean Mannion throwing the ball all over the field. And tonight's a big shot for Washington. A cred game tonight for the Huskies if they could go in to Stanford and, and shock. All right, so Colorado out of the timeout will punt. Braylon Addison is back, and that should factor into this as well. Dara O'Neill, the punter. They do snap it deep. He runs up and rugby's the ball. Oh, and Addison gets hammered. So, an unfortunate penalty there by Severson of Colorado. He didn't realize, I, I'm assuming he didn't realize that Addison was basically running right into his path, and he hammered him. He's the gunner. He's getting pushed, and as he gets pushed off of the guy Kick catch interference on the kicking team. Number 30, 15-yard penalty, first down. So this will end up in... Of course, this in no way was the intended result for Colorado, but this ends up point, bringing up our point. This is going to be a net 17-yard punt. Yeah, and, and see, he's going to get a little shove here, but he's looking back for the ball rather than watching. He th I think he's assuming this ball 
is going over the head of the of the receiver. So the line the drive start for Oregon, the 25 yard line. It's a 17 yard difference. Mariano go for the big one. And he's got Addison, and he is gone. 75 yards. Well, your secondary, your safety has got to be very careful. You can't watch the backfield. Your eye discipline has to be perfect because every play, or a vast majority of them, have the same kind of action. And you'll get caught up thinking what they do 80% of the time, that they're going to do it 100% of the time, and that's where they get you. Small element there, though the sun has dipped just enough that that wasn't as tough a catch either as the one we saw great earlier point. in the quarter. And this is a great, I mean, this is a gut shot, Glenn, after the punt and the penalty. One, one first play, big ball. And, and the offensive line's pass ball, but that action is still there. And if you fake a hitch, you do anything, you can get behind the defense. And that's what happens in this instance. Well, Addison. Did this twice last week on punts against Cal, and we laughed at the time. This was 67 on the official stat sheet, but let's actually clock how far he runs. Farther than I will ever run. <laughs> I mean, he's all yes. he's over there and back and over back here and then down the yeah. sideline, and then he starts making people miss. And where does he go? He uses the best angle, but it's the longest angle to get all the way over there to pick up a block to get to the end zone. Look at that. 139.3 yards. No, or true, no truer statement has Glenn Parker ever made. <laughs> Never. <laughs> so, 22 to 10 now. Oregon, crazy first quarter in Boulder. One thing it has been for the fans here, the Buck fans, even though they're on the short end of the score, it's been entertaining. And let's find out. Uh, the touchback kick. What's going on elsewhere in the Pac-12? Well, it's a Pac-12 game break with Mike Gam, fueled by Gatorade. Ted, let's update everyone on Washington State and Cal to first and goal. DeAndre Caldwell right up the back. 10-yard touchdown, touchdown for him. Coons in control. By the way, Connor Halliday, 356 passing yards, Ted. He's looking pretty good. Yeah, Mike, we, we, were, let, we were noticing up here that the uh, Mike Leach versus his disciple, Sonny Dykes offense, they had over 640 passing yards in the first half of that game, in the first half. As Wood runs to the middle, stands up to take a hit, but gains six. No, no. Connor Wood didn't see him yet. Dee Goodson running a little post, the deep in, had him wide open, but he had enough pressure, he didn't want to force the throw. Oh, Jarrett Mitchell jumps it. Terrence Mitchell saw that, completely jumped that smoke screen route and picks off his second pass of the first quarter. I mean, couldn't have played that any better. Going back to what we said, they can be aggressive on the corners because of their defense and because their offense scores. Terrence Mitchell saw it coming, defeated the block of Goodson in front of him and gets over there to lay out and make a nice play on this ball. That's just... That's beautiful defense. That's the last result in offense I would think I would ever expect on that play. So Mariana's going to go for six more. And just over the reach beyond Josh Huff. Yeah, Josh Huff slips on his cut. It's a corner route, he comes up, cuts in, then cuts back out. He slipped on the first cut, never made it into the route far enough to catch that ball. And look at how quickly Huff got back. Look, he just ran an end zone route, he's right back to the line. So the Oregon runs so quickly. And Gillum saves there on the tackle of Byron Marshall. Gillum saves that play, does a nice job, but he had over-pursued. He had to come back to play that. He had over he needed to be in that gap, back-shouldering that block so that he was there to make the cutback even more so. Mariano just flat-footed. Too easy. That's too easy for a quarterback that good. Keenan Lowe in the back of the end zone for the Oregon touchdown. Yeah, no pressure on him. 
top and, and not enough coverage in the backfield. So it's one thing if you you can pick it pick apart a defense. If there's no pressure, you can really do it if you got guys wide open. You look at that zero pressure on him, and he's easily finds Keenan Low in the back of the end zone. You're right. That's too easy right there. Mariota, just nobody's going to be able to cover that long. So Marcus Mariota keeps a streak going. He's played 18 games as a college quarterback, throwing a touchdown pass in each. 29 points in the first quarter. A lot of guys for the Ducks have scored touchdowns this year. Take a look at this carousel of talent that rolls around. And, and not always the big names you think of. Guys that are really talented that show up, get a chance, get themselves a touchdown. That's a lot of guys. See, but you know what Colorado has to remember right now? They expected this. They came in playing loose because they figured that they had nothing to lose because the Oregon was going to score a lot of points and fast. Well, it's happened. Keep playing loose. Keep taking your shots. Keep trying that. You can't get down. You can't lose your energy. But I think everybody here is surprised by the amount of action in the first quarter. There's a much better buzz in the stadium than we had even uh, during pregame. Saberson and a couple miss gets it just across the 20 yard line. As we encourage you again to make sure you tune into Pac-12 Networks every Wednesday night for a, a signature program. The drive has been an outstanding look with unprecedented access granted behind the scenes of the football programs both in Cal and Arizona State. The new episodes air each Wednesday night at 7 on Pac-12 Networks. This is the 12th possession of this quarter. <laughs> that's, that's unheard of. I mean, this is one haymaker after another. Richardson makes a spectacular grab despite being fouled. He's being held. His inside arm, his right arm is being dragged to his body because the DB is beat. He reaches out with one hand and grabs that thing. This is, that is a phenomenal After catch. number 14 on the defense. That penalty will be declined. Paul Jordan Richardson first down. missed all of last year ACL. Sarah High School in Los Angeles with a pretty Outstanding a high school with a great wide receiver tradition. Yeah, considering that Marquise Lee and George Farmer and a few others were all there on the field with him. But I'll tell you what, that's as good a catch you're ever going to see. Absolutely. That's as good as you're going to see. Two running backs in Powell now in as a fullback blocker. And Wood throws a nice ball to Nelson Spruce. And this is a little bit, now Connor Woods made some bad decisions in this first quarter, but he's showing you something here, rebounding with a couple of nice throws. Yeah, we always say it's not how you react, it's how you respond. Connor Wood, hey, double turnovers here. He comes right back, he's gonna sling the ball out there. Why? They got nothing to lose, right? Let's, let's get out and play loose. I'd love to know what they said to him on the sideline. Well, the nice part, it seems glad about this offense, is they're throwing the ball down the field. They're taking some yardage shots here at all. Remember what we said about speed. Go vertical, go at speed. Looks like some clock confusion, and it's going to mean that Colorado will not snap the ball before the first quarter ends. That was uh, not well done, and Mike McIntyre uh, kind of uh, mirrors the field that most Colorado's there. They should have been able to get another playoff, but something went wrong. But the Bucs will have a chance. They'll be in scoring position when the second quarter starts. Do you buy MFS Investment Management? By eSurance, now offering savings for Pac-12 students and alumni. Find out more at eSurance.com slash Pac-12. And by Dairy Queen, the home of fan food, not fast food. Well, it's a weekend here in Colorado where they're honoring great what was really the greatest period of Colorado football history. Sean Salam's Heisman Trophy. The coach Mac you see on the field is not Mike McIntyre. It's the great Bill McCartney being honored at halftime, heading into the College Football Hall of Fame. Atkins, 
Nice reverse. And Atkins takes it inside the 10. That's one of those matchups we talk about. Running back in middle of the space. He's against a DN. He's running that route right there against Washington. Tony Washington, 6'3", 245, wasn't going to keep up with Atkins on a little whip route. Stood up, good tackle there by Malone of Oregon. Stop Powell right in his tracks at the five. And, it, and Powell's a low coming through there. And Malone got himself low and won with leverage. That's a great tackle by Tarek Malone. Tarek Malone had a Colton count. Play. Boy, Powell got stopped again. This is where Oregon has really succeeded, Glenn. Hardrick and Malone replacing Clay and Alonzo. Well, Hardrick scrapes. He comes in, the guard goes off, and he scrapes right around his end. We call it striking a match. If I had a match on my hip and you had, and I went around you, I'd strike it right off your hip. I'm so tight in there. That was a great job by Hardrick. This, those two uh, haven't replaced NFL guys now, and they've done well. For Oregon, Wood extending, extending, and then out of time. So another red zone situation. Oregon holding Colorado. Mike McIntyre has to make a fourth down call. And he's going to go for points. And you see his look, and that's uh, in the growth of Colorado football with the new coaching staff, that's going to be an area they'll have to address. Is how do we get more proficient in the red zone? Yeah, and, and the very first play looked like it opened up, but Malone made a great tackle. The second play looked good, but he guy scrapes, comes off the block. You gotta, you gotta win your battles in the red zone, and right, and right now the Bucks just aren't doing it. Now the 13 points is awfully good for a lot of games. It's just if you're playing Oregon today. Hi. Well, Colorado Pradley has a sign up here commemorating the highlight of their football history in 1990 National Championship and a great run over a decade long with Bill McCartney as their head coach. An amazing number of talented players. And one thing we saw, we saw with John Embry during his tenure here was the thought of reconnecting Colorado to its terrific past. It's great history. Bill McCartney being honored at halftime again. Over 100 former CU players are here this weekend. Bill McCartney part of a stellar group that will be inducted in December into the College Football Hall of Fame. Well, that ball needs to be covered. And, oh, wow. And Oregon was just not urgent enough getting to that ball. And, and Colorado had a couple guys that looked like they were on it, but it might have slipped out. This, uh, there's a battle going on under there now. Yeah, this but, is the pain. <laughs> tell you what. Oh, and Oregon somehow, well, more accurately, somehow Colorado didn't get that ball. And, and, and you watch this. Two Colorado players are right on it. It hits into their stomachs right there and right there, and somehow they don't get it. Now, in here now, there's, they're grabbing. There's maybe a little pinching, and there's some things happening trying to get guys to loosen up on that ball. Maybe a little gouging. Yeah, Farrow Brown eventually fell on the loose ball. Troy Hill just took a, seemed to me, took a little more leisurely approach to getting that ball. And when he finally did get it, it took that carom off his chest. Colorado almost stole one there. Instead, Oregon has its worst drive start of the first half. Stacks it up for a short gain as we'll get out of the sideline. Andrea. Thanks, Ted. Rashawn, you're here today because Coach McCartney is going to be honored at halftime. How special of a man was he to you? Uh, Coach McCartney is really hard. Uh, 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 how special of a man he was to me. But I'll tell you this, without his gift of gab, I would never be here. Uh, my mother wanted me to go to Stanford, but, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Mac got my mom on the phone and whatever he said to her, convinced her for me to come here. So I really appreciate it. You won the Heisman Trophy here, so a lot of memories, a lot of Colorado fans love you and you're revered here. How emotional is it for you to be back here? Uh, it's real emotional, man. It really brings back a lot of great memories. Uh, it's 
it's strange how time flies so, so fast, but uh, it's great coming back with great city, a bunch of my old teammates, and uh, coming back here to see the flat irons is just very special. All right, thanks for your time. Best of luck to you. Let's send it back to Ted and Glenn. Well, I want to follow up on that in a moment, but first we had a big play there. Uzo Deribe blew up that run play, a long third down, and Mariota sacked. So the Colorado defense has its best stand. Addison Gillum with the sack. Leaders showing up. Derek Webb on first down, Deribe on second, and now Gillum, a freshman, comes in and makes a big play. They said, got to get him to third down. Colorado got him to one and stop him. So Rashawn Salam just gave us a note there. He, Mom wanted him to go to Stanford, and he said, "Do no, you know who he said no to?" Then it was Bill Walsh. That was Bill Walsh's second tenure at Stanford. <laughs> I never heard that story. Breaking news on the Pac-12 Network. I like it. Nelson Spruce with a fair catch, and Colorado has a terrific drive start here and a chance to eat into the Oregon lead. 15 television and film students here at CU. Is true. I only put 10 of them to sleep, Glenn. Well, I, you know, I, I look at them and go, that's me every weekend, sitting here learning from you every weekend. <laughs> Stop. They're actually, a tremendous facility. I was really impressed with what Colorado offers. Well, this has been amazing in this first half. Open men down the field, and Colorado strikes again. Connor Wood to Richardson for 31. Yeah, and this time, uh, he's their safety help behind. So Terrence Mitchell will let him go. He'll, he'll feed him out. Excuse me, that's Avery Patterson feeds him out. Thinking that there's help behind, and there comes the safety. That's Terrence Mitchell playing a little deeper, and Brian Jackson, and they have to close that ground. There's that speed of Richardson. Powell runs it down inside the 15. So let me just finish real quickly and say, CU, great department here. I'm very impressed with the facilities they offer their students to learn the television business, the film business. And I'm really impressed watching C What a different team, Glenn. We saw them a couple times last year without. What a different team with Paul Richardson. You know, they have Paul Richardson, and they have an identity. They have an identity when it comes to offense and defense with things that they want to accomplish every game and then schematically they have th that same identity and that's one thing if you remember that coach helper said for the first for the first time in a while he thinks this bucks team they know who they are and who they want to be yeah, just a different vibe of this offense michael adkins and christian powell two backs in goodson with a little bit of a fly motion but oregon doesn't get fooled and ek Olamu is there to bust it up well, you don't want to come out with three again. I would assume that they want to go on fourth here. You got to get wide. You got to get edges. And that's really played well by Olamu. Ekpre Olamu did a great job of coming across the line of scrimmage and then forcing back inside. And, and I, I'm wrong. Coach is going to go for three again. Well, I admit I'm surprised here. This is fourth and two. Yeah. I would have thought this would be a time to go, but Mike McIntyre wants points. 31-yard try by Oliver. And he does get the points. And so Colorado is chipping away three field goals in the first half. Well, every Monday night, find out what's going on around the conference with your favorite coaches and athletes in all the sports. And the Conference of Champions, Pac-12 Sports Report every Monday night at 9 here on Pac-12 Networks. Short kick this time, covered quickly by Oregon. How about a game recap? Well, right out of the gate, Oregon starts fast. Marcus Mariota with his sixth touchdown, but then a little, a little creativeness by the bus. Reverse to Paul Richardson. He gets his first ever career TD pass. And then, of course, Oregon comes right back, finds Braylon Anderson. Mariota finds him down the sideline. Too much speed. Big plays by Oregon. Creative plays by Colorado to eke out. Stay in the game. Right at the snap, false start, 71, offense. Five-yard penalty, makes first down. 
you know, Oregon is a heavily penalized team for as good as they are and as much as talented as they are, they do get a lot of penalties. And I'm wondering if that's just a byproduct of the rush, rush, rush type mentality. Marshall, the two big bodies out there pulling for him, and Marshall does a nice job. Well, just enough patience to turn that into a good game. Jared Bell played this really well, but he just ran into physics in motion here. He gets out here, you see him 21, but once he gets popped, I'll tell you what, big fella coming around the corner hits you. That, that's a lot of mass against a little bit of mass. And that's the dimension that Mariota continues to impress with. Ability to get out and speed. So he did about a 30 yard sprint there and comes right back to call the next play. And it's a good one. And Marshall runs it. And Marshall gains 16 and takes it to the Colorado 34. Nice job of cutting back, letting things happen. Johnny Munt tied in. Really good block in the hole there. Now a quick ball to Addison. He made two miss and actually gets a few yards. Jared Bell had a shot to stop that play for a loss. I think they're going to look at this, see if his knee was down. I think they're going to see if, if he wasn't Prior down. play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a backward pass. Well, they rule it a backwards pass. Which now, doesn't matter, right? Right. What's the point? The point is, you're right, it's his knee down. Backwards the pass, the ball hit the ground. Okay, that was why it's a backwards That's pass. That's why. It's a backwards pass. Okay. So therefore, but it, I, it, it's hard to tell. We, it, it looks like it was thrown right down the line at the line. So, so a lateral or a backwards pass meant he could pick that ball up and run it. There you go. Forward pass could not. All right. So his knee was not down. It's a question of was it a lateral. So we can't get a, a look. Here's a high look. So Mariota, his left foot is on that line when he that's throws it. He throws it forward. That's forward throw. That is a forward throw. Absolutely. You're correct. So that's an incomplete. Should come back. That's a nice catch then by Bill Richardson. Yes. Here in the replay booth today for the Pac-12. And the key is Mariota's left foot on the line throwing with his right arm so that you know it came from behind that line and it obviously was in front of that line when it hit the ground. So it was forward. Now, I'm not great with angles and, and whatever the geometry that might be called, but here we go. That foot's on the line and it comes forward. That's a forward pass. Now help me, Glenn. My understanding was it was the position of the ball. Yes. Not it, the body. No, but the, what I'm saying is that would help until right. we just got that angle. That would help yeah. us discern where the ball was. And that replay is crystal clear. There you the go. ball, it was a yard forward. That's right. Let's see if, see if Bill, <laughs> Bill saw it the same way. After further review, the pass was forward and incomplete. Therefore, it'll be second down at the 34-yard line. Timer, please reset the game clock 8 to 8 minutes and 52 seconds. Bill Richardson and the uh, Pac-12 officiating crew getting it right from our point of view. Yeah, right? that's a good, and that was a good yeah, catch. It was. In the, in the warp speed offense, that's the kind of thing that could easily slip. Yeah. Well done. I, I'm going back to the play a few plays ago. Right, where Mariota runs, and he probably runs a 30 or 35-yard sprint, goes out of bounds, and then comes right back without a huddle and calls the next play. There's no loss of effectiveness at all. I'm just saying the amazing thing is having the ability to run this offense at this tempo when you're putting it. Right, and that's the key. When you're taking those long runs. Good wrap up there. Well, that's Kent Bear, a longtime defensive coordinator. Never heard Colorado talk to us about that yesterday. Tackling and 
thinks this defense is a better tackling D, and those are the tackles you have to make. Oh well, yeah, it, 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 it's your, it's Byron Marshall, a running back. They move in behind and you know, under one side, so now it creates a difference in who it covers him, and then he runs that little swing. Derek, Derek Webb, great job of playing that ball. And a nice tackle. Webb on the previous play, and that's freshman Addison Gillum. He's, he's having a game. Well, he's having a hell of a half, and he's taking the spot of Doug Rippey, a pretty good player here. And Gillum is having some first half. Ten tackles in the first half. Fourth down. Plus, of course, Colorado, one hand signal for defense so they can line up fast. Marshall, all oh, Marshall, a terrific bounce. And he got the first. It was strung out, it was strung out. Parker Orms, the safety, gets caught back inside just a bit. It's there, it's there, and then you get caught back inside instead of getting up to the edge. Run fits are so important when you're playing Oregon. By that, you have to know exactly which gap is yours, and then when there's an insertion of a fullback or a lead back or a tight end, how that changes which gap is yours again. All right, I was looking for the post, it wasn't there. And then a shovel, and Marshall will take it inside the 10. Mariota has matured so much in the last year or so. The ability on this to feel pressure, keep his eyes downfield, and then understand, I, I'm not the guy, that guy can run better than me and get rid of the ball. Great job by Mario. And now on first and goal, Marshall is stacked. Short gain there. Josh Dupont was at the bottom, who's on duty day also. And for the Colorado defense. The, 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 the pressure of zone scheme blocking on the offensive line, which is a lot of times a two-on-one situation, can really get to you and start grinding you down. Looking for Tyner in the right flat, not there to the middle, back batted at the last minute. Johnny Munt. Yeah, between Parker Orms coming in on one side and Awuze coming from the other, this is a tough one. You'll see two guys cross right in front of the ball. Tough to see, and you've got to catch that with your hands if you're Munt. Can't let it get to your shell where it's going to bounce off. Third down. Mario looking over. Getting the signals from the side. Just a quick toss. Tyner's speed. No, and Gillum has enough speed to make Tyner go out short of the goal line. Well, they pull. They're. they're Backside, they pull their center and their right guard, get them around the edge, but it's not enough. Gillum just a great job closing ground to play with leverage. So fourth down for the Ducks. Well, a lot of noise at Folsom Field. the back play clock running low and it's Tyner who takes it in no it's Mariota again Mariota walks in by himself to the left corner hands the ball to the side judge <laughs> well either one would have scored yeah they got great push up front and backside in crashed on the on the fake Mariota if there's such a thing as waltzing in that's waltzing in now Oregon sends out Maldonado for the extra point. Romariotas runs for a second of the first half. It all comes from the same action. If you put it into every play, people respect. It's in, it's out. It fools everybody. Mariota with another score. Ducks up big. Spectacular late afternoon in the fall, early fall here in Boulder. Of course, it did snow yesterday, but that's a detail. You know, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> desert rat, and I'm still not warm from my yesterday's walk. 
Caught me by surprise, that, yes. sto that snow did. Holmes. Matt Wogan kicking off for Oregon. Severson coming out from Colorado. And had a couple of lanes on kick returns. And Severson gets it out to the 30. Take a look at Oregon, Oregon scoring. I mean, game by game. That's a lot of points. I, I guess if you're, you know, if you're Colorado, the good news is it's trending downward. But uh, it is not quite halftime. So Oregon's putting a lot of points up. And Tennessee right there gave up 59 points. They're locked in a battle right now with number six, Georgia, in overtime. That surprises. Really a oh, big surprise. I mean, that would be in SEC. That game was thought to be kind of like this game. Pretty one-sided. I said this, Glenn. We we were down in the field before the game. We both had the same response. The field. This is natural grass at Folsom Field. It's in fabulous shape. It is it's a great track. Uh, that it would be. That's your favorite type to play on. I, I always like playing on grass. Number one, but it's so short. It's tight. It's it's firm with all the rain and snow. Yeah. You would think it would be soft. It is not. Nice run by Michael Atkins, a freshman from San Diego. It's a Colorado first. But you figure this this good a track ain't gonna hurt Oregon one bit, is it? No, not, not gonna slow them down. Oregon got caught with yeah. too many men on the field. Now, but now blowing the whistle tells us maybe Colorado substituted and didn't give them time. Let's find out. Substitution infraction, defense number 66. Five yard penalty, makes first down. I would agree with you as to why the whistle was blown. I'm not sure on that one. Dr. Pepper halftime report comes up, and they are having a, an arena football game in Berkeley today. Pass frenzy. And uh, you'll hear about that, as well as looking ahead at Washington and Stanford tonight, all coming up with the Dr. Pepper halftime report. Well, Woods got Richardson again. Oh, and Richardson. <laughs> Is gonna kick himself. Richardson wow. is putting a schooling on the corners. He is finding root. Look at him get open here. Just a stutter and he's gone. Mitchell likes to be physical, get his hands on guys. Paul Richardson was out of there, man, and the safety cannot get over the top fast enough. That's Avery Patterson getting over there. Got to come up with that ball. We see him make a one-handed grab. This one can't come up. Richardson's caught three for 114, and that was about a 45-yarder that he should have had. Oh, Powell broke the first hit there. Very nice as uh, Ricky Avili Hamuli had a dead on him. Powell bounced off that hit and gained a couple. Yeah, and, and that shows you the size of Powell because Havili Hamuli is 6'4, 315, and he bounced off him. And uh, that's the type of thing Oregon wants to be next level, wants you know, they're, they're, they're right up there. They want to vibe for the championship. You got to tackle very, very well. That'll be something Nick Aliotti will talk about in meetings, I'm sure. Colorado using two tight ends here, both as wide slot men. So they, in essence, have four receivers. Powell, the running back for Connor Wood. And another ball to Richardson. This one he couldn't get down the field on that sideline route against Mitchell. So fourth down now. And another call for Mike McIntyre. Fourth and three at midfield. And he will send his punt team out. Yeah, you know, going from first and five, they take the shot, they don't get it. They're still kind of ahead of the chains, but they, they can't get enough. Four downs, five yards to go, and couldn't get enough. Braylon Addison lets that one hit, and it will be down inside the 10. Nice punt by Dara O'Neill of Colorado. So in this week's AP poll, four unbeaten Pac-12 schools rank in the top 15. At the eight-yard line, first and ten. Arizona State has a chance tonight in a, for what would be a notable non-conference game. They played Notre Dame in Arlington, Texas. Now they can make a statement. Of course, Washington 
when they play Stanford can make that statement. UCLA survives. If Georgia ends up losing to Tennessee, they're in overtime right now. Of course, that helps Washington move up a little. That helps UCLA. They'll move possibly into the top 10. Mariona, good strong throw on the run there. Hits Addison. Of course, Oregon next Saturday. They have to get through today first, but next Saturday they've got their own big game against the Huskies. Yeah, he's up, he's up. Just received what Georgia hung on in overtime to win their game against Tennessee. Thomas Tyner pushing it out close to the 30. Tyner's a little different back. He, you know, we talked about Byron Marshall running at contact. Tyner's not afraid of it either. A little different than the guys they've had in the past. Josh up out across the 45, so Oregon quickly gets it out near midfield. Well, nice concept down there. Braylon Addison crossed over, kind of a natural pick, allows Huff to come wide open. That's what you, you talked about last week we were, we were discussing, Ted, one receiver's touchdown is every receiver's touchdown, the way they block for each other. a little bit of a stop back shoulder throw to Keenan Lowe that's incomplete. We got two of the most veteran defensive coordinators in the West involved in this game. Ken Bear came with Mike McIntyre here to Colorado. Nick Aliotti's been, of course, in Oregon for a long time. And this is the kind of day where neither one of them's having a ton of fun. Both teams are over 300 yards in the first half. Now, they're, they're, both teams have found weaknesses out there. Of course, Oregon, you're used to it, but Cal trying so many different things, putting Oregon on edge. And who's a Derive? Beat his block. And then beat Tyner. Who's a Derive? Great attack up the field. Great job. Top of the screen. Breaks through the zone block, then wraps up and makes a tackle. Now his high school coach told me his favorite kid of all time, Uzo Derive. And he put a lot of guys into the college ranks and said, this is the guy. Favorite guy of all time. That pitch speaks a lot. This college coach, John Brandon, down, used to be at Corona High School. Right. Corona for him. A long third, screen to Tyner, middle of the field, speed, and first down, Oregon. That's what they do so well. In the right situation, the right call. Little screen. And what I like, Tyner, north and south. He's not looking to get to an angle or an edge. He's north and south, get to the sticks. Up on that catch. Turns, takes it right at Crawley and pushes the ball inside the Colorado 25. And they are doing a nice job on this drive of confusing the secondary of Colorado. That time, Hawkins was the route back under that allowed Huck to come open outside. Hawkins in the slot now. Mariota. Inside the 10. Well, but here's the risk again. We, we talk about punting. And Colorado punted from midfield on fourth and three, and this is what Oregon will do to you. I mean, yeah. Two blinks of an eye, and they're inside the 10. Yeah, they put it down to what, the uh, the eight-yard line. And here's Oregon in the red zone. Marshall inside the five. It is so many words, so many descriptions for the Oregon offense. One, to me, watching this first half, it is relentless. Timeout, Oregon. And this is about the only way you get a defensive out. break. Oregon a calls a timeout. Marcus Mariota having a game, you know, pulling that ball, getting himself that touchdown. But it's just putting the ball out there. Now, this one's in the sun. It's a nice grab by Braylon Addison, but it's got to be on target. Marcus Mariota again with another throw. Beautifully done, had a lot of time, and then this time, take it back, get it done. He's accounting for a lot of offense. He's been good with his eyes. And, and going back, Ted, 
when you talk about what their offense can do, they grind you because they come after you so hard and relentlessly with that offensive line. But everything looks the same. If you're a defender, other than the offensive line and pass blocking, everything starts off the same hook. That little, the, the, the hand, the read handoff. Now they block them all differently, but it all looks the same. You get caught with your eyes out of place, you give up a big play. Just got rid of it. You saw his numbers a second ago. He's not had a great percentage half. But he's had a big yardage half. 257 on 12 completions. That was that was really played well on the edge. That was Judah Parker. Did not fall. Leveraged it, so it forced him back in. And Deribe could come in and lay a smack on him as he got rid of that ball. by Josh Hunt for the Oregon touchdown. Well, you like the ball because it's put right on the body. Doesn't it, Hunt doesn't have to stretch with this ball. It's just an inside slant. This ball's put right on his body. Nice job. That, that, was, a, that was a mechanical drive. Really well done by him. Six touchdowns in the first half for the Oregon Ducks. Six touchdowns in a half. That's not surprising. Colorado's offense would be the one thing that has surprised. Of course, Colorado and everybody here in Boulder endured the, the horrible flooding following severe rains. It lost the Fresno State game. That will not be replayed. Colorado this week was able to schedule a game against Charleston Southern two weeks from today here at Folsom Field that will give him a, a 12th game on the season. Colorado players, we spoke to a couple yesterday who all went out. Obviously, when you live here and you're a part of it, you see what a college town, a great college town, how everyone gets affected by it. Something that hadn't been experienced here in, what, it been 35 years since they'd had flooding like that. I was running on the Boulder Creek this morning and saw a gigantic tree that had been sawed down and placed as a dam, basically. It must have been something of an emergency dam across the creek. You know, probably not far from the campus here. I thought it interesting, both Demarcus Webb, or both uh, uh, Derek Webb and Jack Harris said it makes you look beyond football. And that's, that's a, that's a, very mature outlook for young football players. They said, we really started to look beyond football and beyond ourselves to this community and what it means to us. And here's snapshots of the involvement of the Colorado players. A lot of boulders displaced wound up coming to the Colorado football facilities. Players had a chance to help distribute, meet. Classes were shut down for a few days. Again, the football game was lost. The boulder has rebounded. Carry and Boulder very firmly wants it to be known they're open for business. <laughs> and I think we can, being here these two days, we can support that. Derek Malone this time bounced right off of Powell. Powell came through with a head of steam, and Malone, who had stood him up the time before, bounced right backwards. Powell still bringing. So Colorado just. Well, they'll get one more snap if they want to after a first down game here. Content right now to say, okay, well, that's, that's enough of the half. The Buffs will get the ball to start the second. And it does not appear that, that they're not going to snap the ball again. And the Bucks, they take a lot in with them. They, they took their chances. They took their shots. They came out with a great attitude. They put some points up. But unfortunately, a couple of turnovers that result in points. And you can't punt. And you can't fail in the red zone. That's it. So they've got an identity. They're looking good. But they're just not, right now, quite to the level that Oregon is. Colorado at 318 yards, 8.4 per play. But Oregon 
six touchdowns. Let's hear from Mark Helfrich now with Graham. Thanks, Ted. Coach, even with DeAnthony Thomas out, still speed, relentlessness, and a lot of determination out there on offense. But how can you limit the penalties moving forward in this game? Well, that's not our biggest problem. We, we're just not playing very well. I mean, I think the only thing we're probably happy with is the scoreboard, which is a, a good good thing to be happy with. But, you know, we're just not playing our, our standard right now, our style, and, and we need to fix that. Colorado came into this game with a lot of emotion and a lot of confidence. What's most key as far as keeping the pressure on them on both sides of the ball in the second half? Just that and then doing our job. You know, we're, we're peeking in the backfield on play action, double moves, and, and, and they've, made some, they've made some big plays, but we've done a good, a decent job of holding the field goals in those situations. and. and you know, trading sets for threes is okay, but we'd like to be 7 0. All right, coach, thanks a lot. Best of luck in the second half. Let's send it back to Ted and Glenn. That was pretty much standard operating procedure. 415 yards, most importantly, six touchdowns. And even though their defense, it's one characteristic, breaks big plays against them, commanding halftime lead for the Ducks as we take you now to our Pac 12 Network studios and the Dr. Pepper halftime report with Mike Ann. Well, at Boulder, Oregon rolled up a huge first half, and you, know, you, you can break things down very much by different ways. We talked about this at Oregon on first and second down. They've been amazing on every down. And, and I think, Glenn, if you just cut it to the quick, even I figured out touchdowns beat field goals. Yes, they do. Oregon scored six touchdowns in the first mm. half. Colorado kicked three field goals. And, and you know, it, yeah, you look at that graphic, I, I think it's phenomenal. 16 of their 18 total first downs happened on those two plays, or those two downs, excuse me. But if you're Colorado, you come out and you win the third quarter. That's all you have to do, win the third quarter. Steal a possession, score a couple times, and the fourth quarter is wide open. You can put a couple touchdowns on in this third quarter and steal a couple possessions. Get to the fourth quarter and it's wide open. So you, ne you, you do not give up at this point. Connor Wood. An injury to Jordan Webb has been the quarterback this year for Colorado. Who coaches him. had the position yesterday that when Jordan Webb is healthy, and he's been practicing full, but he was not dressing for today's game. But when healthy, they said there will be competition. Christian Powell running on the first down play. Poseco Lacombo coming in there again. They bypass him. That's the design of that play. Your guard pulls and goes in the hole, and you force him to make the tackle. Well, he, he's, he made the tackle. He's made it a couple times now. They had a big gain on that play, but they're going to have to adjust now because Oregon adjusted. Now, halftime here was highlighted by the presence on the field of a ton of former Colorado players all here to honor Bill McCartney. Let's hear from him now with Graham. Hi, Ted Coach. You're highly regarded in this town and at this school, and you were just honored moments ago at halftime. Describe your emotions. I, it's overwhelming, really. Seeing these guys, all those players come back, I hadn't seen some of those guys in 25 years. So it just chokes me up. I mean, you know, when you, when you go in their homes and recruit them, you're their friend for life. It's not just about football, it's about life. And so I just overwhelmed. In December, you're going to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. How special will that moment be for you? It, it'll be overwhelming. Yeah, I'll accept it on the behalf of our coaches and players. I, I had a little bit to do with it, but they did most of it. All right, thank you very much, thank Coach. You. Let's send it back to Ted and Glenn. Said with expected humility, Grace Bill McCartney, Coach Mack on the field. And that is the standout highlight, of course, of CU football history, the national championship. Coach Max, a legend. You know, he's a, he's a guy that every player at that era knew and wanted to play for. 
Meanwhile, right now, Colorado gets a first down off a pass interference penalty, but I'll tell you, Connor Wood took a huge hit. And he's bouncing back here. This is going to be interesting to watch the next couple of plays because Derek Malone absolutely smoked him on that pass. That's a great point, Ted. Got there in a pile of fans, kind of, you know, they were a little upset by it. Take a look here. A little earlier, he comes from inside and brings him down. It's a good, it's a legal hit. But the fans always, they don't like their quarterback going down. But you're right, it, it's going to, we need to pay attention to him now. Atkins trying to go wide. Oregon swings out that edge well and stops him for a two yard gain. How about the speed of DeForest Buckner right there? He's 6'7, 286, and he was running stride for stride with a with a small man. I, you know, Glenn, we've known Stanford has had a terrific defensive front seven the last couple of years. Oregon saw that firsthand last year. This Oregon defensive front seven, we've seen two weeks in a row now, has looked awfully good. And complete to Richardson, coverage by Troy Hill. And, and the fact that Connor Woods had as much time as he had speaks speaks well of this off offensive line for Colorado. They've done a nice job in man situations. A lot of the pressure has come with an extra man coming, something they can't account for. Screen was tried and the pass was tipped. Tyler McCullough was the intended receiver, and Buckner got a piece of the ball. Stefan Namebot, the right tackle, hasn't played a lot of football. From Cameroon, he's kind of a, one of those complete athletes. He lettered in soccer, volleyball, basketball, football, all through high school. Sometimes he's incredible on film, and sometimes you can see that he hasn't played a lot of ball. That last play went for a cut, completely missed Buckner, and that's where that hand got up. So the Buffs will go on fourth down. Again, in that awkward field position. Big pressure coming, and Wood does a great job. He spun away from a couple, but just too many folks. Rodney Hardrick was the first man through to the quarterback. Connor Wood, nice job there, but you're right. But again, an extra man. They bring two extra guys. Your blocking back can only pick up one. Look to your right. Your guard takes the first backer. Your running back is outside on the outside backer, and they bring an extra man. And that guy cannot be blocked. And Connor Wood shows some strength. Protects the ball, but just not enough. So Oregon on downs, takes over, Marshall spins away, Mario, <laughs> good try. Mario will get a, uh, he's gonna slap himself on the helmet, he'll, he'll get, he'll get like a D minus for effort there on that block. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he didn't really commit to the block. Oh, no. He knew where he was needed, yeah. just not what was needed. He was just, and I, was, I would guess Gunny was being smart, he was trying to just run at some interference. Marshall takes it to the 50. Marshall Long Forms again on the tackle for it. Mario to this is the 18th game he's played. And we joked with him last week in Eugene about this, and Ryan McGrady of our Pac-12 Conference office came up with a number. Well, this could be trouble for Colorado. Well, angled. Out of bounds. With Mario to speed, if he could have turned that, <laughs> that could have been dangerous. But Awuze was able to run him out of bounds. There's that. Zone blocking with the read. The read option on the backside. He takes it and he's gone. It, I, it's tough, man. To keep, to, we've seen how hard it is to tell if he has the ball or not, right? We used the uh, baseball analogy last week about this. And Mariota laughed about it. Ryan McGrady found out he's got four complete games. Mariota's only finished four games in his college career. That's out of this. I mean, that's because all the organs blowing out of people. But isn't it amazing? This is his 18th game, and he's only seen the end of four. Yeah, it, 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 it goes to show how good they are. And, you know, we talk depth. How much better does your depth get if they're always getting into games and playing as well? So it just perpetu perpetrates itself year after year after year.
That's a tough word for me to say. <laughs> Perpetuate <laughs> itself. Gonna get all my peas out. Ooh. Ooh. Right, for Hoppe, a flag is thrown. The second one comes in on the coverage by Bell. Yeah, Huff on his cut, I think, got a little grab. I think Bell grabbed him just a little bit. Pass interference, offense Whoa. number one, push off. My bad. 15 yard penalty, makes second down. Yeah, he's, Mark Helfer just, was... just saying, you're bad, referees. <laughs> yeah, he was saying he was held, he yeah. was held. Inside receiver right here on this cut. And he gets up into the chest, but I didn't see a noticeable push off. I saw a grab by Bell. So I see both things. To me, that should be no call. I, I would agree with that. that. That could have just been nothing. Could have been nothing. I, I see what they saw, but I also saw the other part. So now long second, and Mariota's got Addison. And another touchdown. For Breland and Addison, another big play, 44 yards for six. Speed across the formation. Comes from one side, runs the deep post all the way across, through the hashes, wide open. Bell can't stay with him. Maldonado to kick. Morgan used their different two-point play on the first touchdown. They've not needed it since. Marcus Mariota lighting it up again. Finds Braylon Addison crossing the field. Morgan Ducks continue to put points on the board. All right, so Oregon is at 50 and counting. Still have 25 minutes of football to play. Number mania around Oregon football. Mariota had in the Tennessee win, he threw for over 450. So started looking at the numbers he's put up today. There's six touchdowns against Tennessee. Colorado's had decent run backs. Adkins out near the 30. Marcus Mariota with his eyes. Now, Oregon likes zone read. That means zone blocking to where if you handed the ball, that's what it would be. But the read is those eyes of Mariota looking at the backside guy. He blocks him with his action and his eyes. So you get numbers to one side with the zone, the read of Marcus Mariota on the end. I don't think anybody has done it as well as he does it or is doing it as well as he does it right now. And again, glad that subtlety of quarterback, right? The play fake. That's right. The play fake. Oh. Stick that ball oh. in. Oh. Tony Jones now in as the Colorado running back for the first time. Flag down on his play. Illegal formation, offense, five men in the backfield, five-yard penalty, Maine's first down. Mike McIntyre doing what you expect first-year coach to do in this situation. He was at last night watching a high school game somewhere, recruiting. Got to get out there. You got to find the best guys. And yeah, absolutely. Right. That's the toughest part, I think, of the job is, is I don't think recruiting ever stops. Spruce on the outside. That is a nice first down gain. Last week, we were in Eugene, and Colorado was staying in Eugene before their game at Corvallis. Mike McIntyre on Friday night was in the hotel lobby watching his son play a high school game on his iPhone. Done. They, their, their presence from Mike McIntyre's tenure at San Jose State to a lot of Northern California recruits, many of whom they were recruiting while at San Jose State, and they had those recruits actually make their commitments to come here once McIntyre and much of the staff came. He understands, first off, Pac-12, you got it, you gotta attack California in your recruiting. 
Now, there's always been a, a traditional tie to the Inland Empire in the Los Angeles area to Boulder, but now it, it's stretching up north. And talking to some of the coaches, both Oregon and Colorado, you know, the thing about being a college coach is you never stop recruiting. Like Richardson. Hey, and that and if he had caught that ball, he was going to pay a price. And I think he heard those footsteps. Yeah. I think he knew. Now, the unfortunate part for Colorado, and again, we're, we're not even to the midway part of the third quarter, but despite a, a day that where they've had some big plays on offense, and a lot of numbers, but only one touchdown. Yeah, red zone inefficiency obviously has hurt them. Turnovers are, but they moved the ball. <laughs> Oregon had one man got in there and did his best effort. Now Addison. Can he repeat last week? No. Emden spun along the sideline, and finally four men bring him down. Yeah, this is that kind of gorgeous day in Boulder. You don't go very far without seeing a bicyclist. Late afternoon, morphing into early evening now in Boulder, and a, a very entertained and pretty enthusiastic crowd. The first half, see, it's thinned a little bit here, and that's the impact of what Oregon has done. 488 yards for Oregon and seven touchdowns. And here they come, and it's Byron Marshall for more. One one thing that has happened, Mark Helfrich has admitted, it's he thinks. A positive down the line. The injury to DeAnthony Thomas has let Marshall get first team reps, a lot more carries, and let Thomas Tyner, who's going to be a big part of this team, you have to believe in future years, really get his feet wet. And you, that you know, there's an understated part of the game, and, and that is when you have a guy like DeAnthony Thomas on the field, a lot of guys say, "I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy to step up." Then they get the chance to do that because it becomes almost habit for some guys to wait for DeAnthony Thomas to make a play rather than to be the one to step up. And Oregon has not had that that no. issue. Everybody's wanting to be the man. And Mariota finds Farrell Brown across midfield. Well, Mariota. Has thrown some beauties again today. Percentage won't be what it would like, but boy, he's had the big pass plays left. Yeah, yeah, and he's only he's had a couple drops already, and he's had the big pass plays, as you said. And when he's had time, he's picked apart the defense. But the uh, credit Colorado early got pressure on. And he's well over 300 pass yards for the game. Braylon Addison with two touchdowns again this week. Last week's were returns. This week's are receptions. He's caught five for 158. All right, let's see if Dre on the sideline, Dre. Ted, you mentioned DeAnthony Thomas, and I've been watching him. He's been very active on the sidelines, standing in huddles and giving advice to the other running backs and other players on the team. He's been very vocal, and that's exactly why Coach Helfrich told me that he wanted him to be here, even though he's not playing. That's that leadership he was talking about, Ted. Marshall. So, dear, first down carry for Marshall. I would assume that there was a, an intent on the part of Oregon to do everything they possibly could to be sure Thomas is ready for next week. Third down. Hardest thing for an injured player is to keep his mind in the game. Bring him along, dress him, get him involved with the young guys so that his mind is in the process of the game so he's not slow on the uptake the next time he gets in. Mariano with a late pitch. And Huff takes it inside the 30. <laughs> So Marshall with another 100-yard game, the seventh 100-yard rush game already this year for an Oregon Duck. I mentioned Tyner getting some action. He's already scored his fifth touchdown. Yeah, he's been used more inside, more short yardage, banging on people. We've seen the speed of Marshall outside. And Hop 
breaking tackles, dragging defenders into the end zone for the Oregon score. 26 yards. Well, he, Kenneth Crawley, the, the, the DB here, has to do a better job wrapping up and tackling. Huff's, Huff's tough. He's slippery, but he wanted it. He wanted to get there. And he was hungry for that touchdown. That was a nice throw by Mariota. A phenomenal job with the ball after the catch by Huff. And now Matt Wogan had to kick the point for the Ducks. Relentless continues. The eighth Oregon touchdown. It's like the tide, it just keeps coming in. Oregon Ducks, this time it's Mariota to Josh Huff for the score. Oregon update. Ducks with another just ferocious day. Five touchdown passes by Mariota, 355 through the air. And that might be the mark that enables Mark Helfrich to uh, call it off for the first team. When you get a 41 point lead, that's then. <laughs> that's our mark. Kick to Atkins. And the Colorado freshman running back comes out. He's out just across the 25-yard line. Now, Oregon coach Mark Helfrich, we referenced the story a little bit last week that he was thinking, uh, really wasn't thinking much about getting into coaching for a career. And we actually went back and found his high school year, but Marshfield High School, Coos Bay, Oregon, 1992. Got 3 396. Wow, that's Park. That's Parker-like. Well, somewhat. I mean, I, I don't know how they do the opposite, uh, you know, those big yeah. numbers, but how about this senior award teacher's pack? <laughs> and he thought he wouldn't get into politics because he wasn't dirty enough. Dirty enough. You know, Very a, smart man. Sounds like a couple politicians I know yeah. might be lying on that one. Now, see, with my yearbook, it just said who? <laughs> Mr. Powell, a heavy run for first down. Well, I, I didn't play any sports in high school. I didn't even take a picture for the yearbook my last three years. I was out. It was gone. This Hard guy, to... pretty impressive. He was, uh, yeah, he was offered a chance to be a walk-on at Oregon. Decided he wanted to play. Went to Southern Oregon to play. So he success successfully navigated the coaching ranks, correct, to get to the head coaching job, and he was the teacher's pet. Yet he wasn't dirty enough for politics. That's called self-awareness, Glenn. I right? think it I is. Like that, isn't it? I think, isn't I think he knew what he wanted to do, and he wanted to influence people, not be influenced. Really? And, and Mark Helfrich went. Mike Bellotti got him back into coaching, got him back to work as, as a GA, and we ended up, he went to Arizona State, came here to Colorado, and then Chip Kelly brought him back. And Chip Kelly, Still raves about Helfrich. Went to bat big time twice for Helfrich to become the head coach. Richardson with a catch. So now these these corners can come up and be a lot more aggressive. They can not only because now you're going to play safeties back a little. You know that they're going to be thrown, so now your corner to get be more aggressive. This is where interceptions, although we've already had a couple, this is where they uh, they really take their toll. A guy like Olamook could step up or Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell had two in the first quarter. Colorado's showing an interesting commitment, and it's become more with Powell as the game's gone on. But they're committing themselves to the run. They're just pounding. That's the 18th carry for Powell. Well, you, they have an identity of who they want to be. Now, they're looking at this score, like a lot of people say, well, we're, we're not in this game. But we're not going to change who we are because we need to run these plays against good players so that the next time we know better and we're better at what we do. Good fly up there on the Oregon side. Raheem Cassell on the tackle. Some great gap fits, responsibilities. You see, a lot of what Oregon D-line does is what's called two-gapping. They butt an offensive lineman up straight up, face up, and then play whichever gap the ball goes to. It's an incredibly hard technique. It takes studs on the defensive line to do it. They're hard to find. Oregon's found a bunch of them. Oh, 
terms of a drop, it'll be fourth down. So here's, a, here's an interesting question, Glenn. Could this Oregon defensive front seven be the equal of Stanford's? You know, I think they, they can be at some point. Uh, the problem there, they're going to struggle. We, we've seen it today. They do struggle sometimes because they're young. Physically, they're very good. And what it allows them to do is play with less numbers sometimes because you got a guy too gap. And uh, that that's where they are going to be problems for teams. So are they as good as Stanford 7 right now? No, but can they be? Certainly. And probably better. That statement, that's saying something. Ooh, Addison lets that go again. Well done by Dara O'Neill. That's the second punt that he's hit with that perfect backspin. Downs the ball inside the 10. Well, important games. Before November the 7th, Stanford has Washington tonight. Oregon has to go to UW next week. But if the stars align, teams can handle Washington and their other foes between now and then. That's the blockbuster game of the season of Pac-12 at Stanford on Thursday night. I, I, I'm excited to see that game. Now, A.O., our man, just hit me. You know that uh, Stanford's the last team to beat Oregon at home and at, on the road. That's, that's, that's saying something about that Stanford team. Jeff Locke in at quarterback now, and there's an Oregon fumble, and Colorado says they've recovered, and the officials confirm. You get a new quarterback in, quarterback center exchange, always tough. Cheerleaders like it. There you go. And that ball is not the exchange. That just gets yeah, knocked Tyner. out. Thomas Tyner is yeah. the carrier, and it got knocked from him. Yeah, Parker Orms, number 13, with his head, gets in there, knocks that ball out. So. Let's watch when Oregon next possesses the ball and see if Tyner's on the field. Last week, Byron Marshall, in a, in a very rainy night, was dropping the ball in the first quarter. Further review, the ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. All right, so the, now that fumble is being reviewed from upstairs by Bill Richardson. A lot of time, you know, Glenn, you saw it, I'm sure, playing. A lot of times, coach just does a zero tolerance for, for fumbles. Short string. We'll send a guy, and Mark Helfrich did not. He kept putting Marshall on the field. So that ball, it's hard to tell from that angle. As I said, Orms was in on that tackle, and it looked like Uzo Deribe was in on there. The ball looks out before his behind hits the ground. Yeah. So that looks like a fumble. And that was a great view. That last one was perfect. You could see it really, really well. This is, I think, the view we need. You can see he's not After under the ground. After the ruling on the field is confirmed. Yes. And Bill and Richardson right again. And I saw Bill at halftime. We talked a little bit about the, uh, the first half play. I mean, right. And the nice part about this tonight, both reviews have been done promptly that's a great pack 10 name right in the foreground there that's troy walters who is a an outstanding receiver at stanford on a pack 10 championship team and he is a first year assistant with mike mcintyre joining the colorado staff this year So Powell puts it inside the 10, and here's where when we go back to the red zone theme. It's probably not going to impact the game, but Colorado needs to put this turnover in the end zone. Absolutely right. For them, they need it for who they are. But it's going to be tough between the tackles because of how good those D linemen are. But Taylor Hart is really, I think, underrepresented when you talk about good yeah. D linemen in this league. Connor Wood there wisely extends the play and then gets rid of the ball. 
Yeah, last week when we uh, asked Nick Aliotti about defenders, you know, most coaches don't like to until you really push him a little bit to give you a name. The first name when he when we pushed hard enough was Taylor Hart. Yeah, and, and because he shows up on film, and you can't hide a guy. There's, there's Nick. He's been in this game a long time. He's he's forgotten a lot more defense than I ever learned. I'll tell you, we have two. I mean, really, two of the veteran D coordinators in the whole sport here tonight. And Aliotti and Ken Bear. Atkins runs it middle. We're talking earlier, you and I, but Ken Bear has a mark in this week, this week's task for Ryan McGrady, our intrepid Pac-12 researcher. Ken Bear is the defensive coordinator here at Colorado. It is the fifth school in this conference for which he's been a defensive coordinator. The fifth. Fourth down. And oh, oh. too bad for Colorado. Connor Wood had Richardson. Connor Wood had him. Skied it because of a linebacker in his way. Tried to put it up there. Just lost the ball. Not finishing over it. That's why that ball sailed just a bit. So there's traffic out there with that tight end and linebacker sitting in that hole. Connor thought, I think yeah. Connor Wood thought that Richardson could jump just a bit more than he actually could. There's Kent Bear. Yep. Glasses on. Started in this conference a long time ago with Bruce Snyder, defensive coordinator both at Cal and Arizona State, later on at Stanford and Washington, at Notre Dame, and then back to San Jose State, and Mike McIntyre made sure he had Kent Bear come with him here. That's amazing. I wonder if anybody else has been a D coordinator for five different schools in a, in a BCS conference. So lucky. And Tyner was back on the field for that first down carry. Oh, Tyner holds that ball. Derek Webb out there on the hit for Colorado. Derek Webb had great coverage. Gets his arm there. And that, that shows Jeff Lockie, there's a lot of talent to put a ball on a rope with a, into a guy who's got coverage of two guys on him. And what a grab. Tyner to be able to grab that ball with all that traffic. That's where you start seeing talent kind of just it, it pervades this entire roster. Jeff Lockie. Going with a deep ball here. And that's intended for Eric Dungey. And was intercepted. Greg Henderson with the pick for Colorado. Lockie doesn't get near enough on this ball. When you're throwing out into that real estate, you've got to put it over the top because there's someone sitting underneath. You can't go back shoulder. So this thing just gets too much air. It needed to be about three more yards out there. Of course, Henderson, nice job of Justin getting that ball. And Mark Helfrich may be the head coach, but you saw for a flash there, he's still a quarterback's coach. <laughs> That was the first man that Lockie saw when he got back to the sideline. Connor Woods seeing Oregon defenders and is dropped. Oregon getting into the second team and Joe Walker with the sack. That's a huge loss, a 15 yard loss on Oregon's second sack. But Walker with all that hair. He's out of Palos Verdes, you know, that's a, a surfer enclave. All that hair flying around up there, I'm a bit jealous. And Wood's going to get dropped again. This won't be a sack. He actually gained a couple of yards, but DeForest Buckner on the play. And DeForest Buckner was still stalemated to the line, couldn't get past the offensive lineman. So when, when Wood scrambles, scrambles yeah. right into him. That's a long arm to get away from. A guy like that reaches out one big paw, he takes up the whole gap. You know, remember, Glenn, when Troy Palomalu came on the scene, I don't know, a decade ago, and we're all looking at his hair, which is part of his heritage. And now, look at, look at that. It's commonplace. Now, do you do know I had hair like that back in 91 in the league? You did? I did, a full beard and long hair. How did Coach I didn't have anything on top, but I had a lot of long hair. <laughs> I like that. All right, 15 minutes to play in Boulder. Thank you.
in the 2013 season. An insane amount of scoring as proof in our Coors Light cold hard facts. And if they can extend that streak next Saturday in Seattle at Husky Stadium, that'd be a heck of an achievement. It would be an achievement that in, in, with the up tempo that Washington's brought to their offense, I think they're going to get a chance. Going back for Richardson. I'm, tonight, Glenn, I think that's one takeaway from Colorado that has been known about. The number of downfield shots they've been trying to give their best guy here. No, yeah, I like the fact that they're doing that. Now, on that one, Terrence Mitchell got a little bump. But you're right. They're putting the ball out there for him, and he's made some plays. He's dropped a couple, but he's made some nice plays. Maybe the, the best catch I've seen all year. I, can, I don't have to qualify that. It is the best catch I've seen. That was something else. Richardson has caught five for 134. He's thrown a touchdown pass. The first pass of his career. He threw a 75 yarder on a reverse in the first half. O'Neill runs up and hits that. Running lateral rugby kick. Takes the return out of play. Gets a decent net on it. As nightfall descends on the CU campus in Boulder. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in game action. Pac-12 football brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And by Dr. Pepper. Win up to $100,000 in tuition by telling us your story at drpeppertuition.com. No purchase necessary, always one of a kind. Downtown Boulder, and it is open for business. Just the roads are open and clear with a very few exceptions, but Boulder is back, and they, uh, after surviving a rough period, they, City of Boulder is very proud that they're back and active. As Jeff Lockie's in the game for Oregon here. Bassett on the running play. I, I could tell that all of these students have left. It is family weekend, and I know that the students are taking their families right now. They're showing them the library, and all the academic buildings, all the places that I study, mom and dad, do my work. The Oregon faithful, there are a lot of Oregonians here. They are all still here enjoying this as Lockie carries the ball. Kenny Bassett is a junior from Beverly Hills, California, on the carry, and that stacked up by Colorado will not be a first down. And it's interesting, I looked out on the field, you see how many first team defensive players are still out there for Colorado. And that's a problem that we've seen in our last couple of years coming here, Glenn, is depth. Yeah. And was there any greater example of that than what we heard? We were in Eugene last week. We heard that USC had, I think it was 56 or 57 players is all they had with them at Arizona State. And of course, they had the sanctions, which really hurt their depth. And then, you know, you have those, so you don't recruit as many as, as many guys because of that. But you have guys leave because of that. So it becomes harder and harder. It's no ball. I, I mean, 70 is the limit for a time visiting out, team Oregon. traveling That's in the conference. Charge, and I've never out. heard of a team having that few players in a time conference out. game. All right, timeout taken here before the Oregon fourth down. Gam in studio with you for this game break fueled by Gatorade. Homecoming at Northwestern matching up against fourth rank Ohio State. King Culture, the two yard touchdown run. Northwestern back on top. Meanwhile, Notre Dame leading Arizona State. A couple field goals to start the game for the Sun Devils, but it was a Tommy Reese touchdown. That's got the Irish on top. All right, Mike, we have a fourth down play here for Oregon. And Bassett's going to get smothered. Colorado's defense stands up. And I tell you, another guy who's a veteran has been through a lot here. Uzo Duribe was right in the middle of that. They, they reestablished the line of scrimmage behind the offensive line. Little stem, little slant, come in there, color in the hole, 
nowhere to go with the ball. So Deribe's had three tackles for loss tonight. So nice night for him as Connor Wood comes back here with the Colorado offense. You notice how proud Sam Polis is here at Northwestern Grad about his homecoming. Pumping his fists. A rare show of emotion out of Sam Polis. Yeah. Tony Jones on the carry. <laughs> Mr. Powell coming off. He's had more of a workload tonight than we may have forecast. 20 carries. Haven't seen as much of Michael Atkins, freshman who had a good game in Corvallis last week. Tony Jones in there now gets the ball. And he's tripped up. Joe Walker clipped him. We look at some of the leaders around the country, and that's the Heisman Trophy Watch brought to you by Nissan. Well, Marcus Mariota, another great game tonight, but back east, Taj Boyd, Clemson, had a big day today. He, he went out and had 455 yards passing, five TDs, but did throw two interceptions against Syracuse. And how about Teddy Bridgewater? 348 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions against Temple. It, but you know what? It comes down to moments. Who's going to have moments? And right now, Mariota's still got Stanford, still got Washington, and a possible championship game. Throw there by Colorado just off the tip of Devin Ross. Taj Boyd's got some more moments that he that he might have down the down the schedule. But Teddy Bridgewater, as good as he is, his moments will be because Louisville's on TV, so you see him so many times in those those prime time slots. So people know him and they see the numbers. But he really hasn't played. He's not going to have a moment. He's not going to have that big game because of their schedule. I just realized Syracuse is in the ACC. When did that happen? So Taj Boyd played today in a dome, and I just read probably the, well, in the, the Atlanta dome, they probably play in there once or twice. He had 20 of 27 today for 455 in a dome. I think Marcus Mariota would like to play in a dome once in a while. <laughs> That'd be a nice advantage. As we have eight, eight minutes of change to go on Oregon's night in Boulder. Yeah, the drive, new edition, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and, uh, and you saw Sonny Dykes. I didn't get a chance to see this past week's episode yet, but that had to be a fascinating look at how Cal endured the miserable weather in Eugene last week. Obviously, on the scoreboard, not well. As Rodriguez takes it, Arizona State just scored a touchdown just before the half tonight, so they're back up 13-7 to on Notre Dame. As you will be at home next Saturday night against Colorado. It'll be a Pac-12 Networks game, a night game next Saturday. Ball carrier there. That's Raheem Cassell. Listed as a linebacker and obviously getting a turn now to carry the ball a little bit. Well, Rodriguez came out. Now that was a that looked like a now they're ruling that out of bounds. And I guess they ruled that forward. I couldn't tell. Stan was the intended receiver. Just too much on it. Got too high and away from it. That's just the age and the inexperience and getting his adrenaline going. Rodriguez trying to keep, doesn't get away. And Colorado wraps him up. Justin Solis takes care of it. State Farm post game report will come up with Mike and Rick Neuheisel, Curtis Conway, and Jeremy Bloom with all of the day in college football. Washington State winning at Berkeley today. Oregon taking care of their business tonight here in Boulder. And still to come, Washington and Stanford at Palo Alto. Another deep ball thrown to Eric Dungey that's incomplete. There's, there's an example of a ball that a young kid putting on a rope, 
you got to put some air onto that ball. You got to give your guy a chance. At Oregon, not. It's interesting in their approach here. They're not just handing the ball off to run out the clock. They're letting these guys throw the ball a little bit, try to develop a little talent. Oregon does have a punter. Spruce on the return. Short return there after the Oregon punt by Eric Dargan. Now, last night here, Boulder is a big night on the volleyball court as Colorado upset number one ranked Washington. Yeah, a huge upset for them. And then also, you see that upset by the volleyball team. Out on the soccer field, the women's soccer team beat Oregon State. It's the first time they've beaten Oregon State before, so they got the win there. I went out and watched that game. You did? I did. I walked over to the field and watched the young ladies play. It was a lot of That's fun. That's where you were when I was going for that extra study session. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find you now. I know where you were. I was out at the, <laughs> out at the field down there. There you go. That's good. I enjoyed it. Hey, it's a, a good, good time here tonight. They in fact, had some recruits here on family weekend for the Colorado basketball team. The men's team was here tonight with Tad Boyle, who's done a tremendous job. And we've seen it firsthand here on Pac-12 Networks, how Colorado has become a force Pac-12 men's basketball. Middle throw there is completed. For the short game to Sean Irwin. Here's the men's basketball team. It was introduced earlier in the half. One of the conference's best players is coming back, Spencer Dinwiddie. Here's Tad Boyle, who was coaching at Northern Colorado in the big sky. Got that program going, and Colorado said, come over here and do it for us, and he's done it. Atmosphere here Boulder for basketball is tremendous. So, so who's your pick? To, who, do you, who do you think of the programs to watch basketball-wise in the Pac-12? Well, I think these two, you know, Oregon's had to replace a lot, but Dane Altman knows what he's doing. He's got some really, he's got a terrific transfer coming in, Mike Mosier. Tad Boyle and Colorado will be terrific. I have a feeling that Sean Miller's in good shape. Just have a feeling, Glenn. Does, Glenn's looking at me crossways here. Just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Just, you know, hey, they look pretty good. Aaron Gordon coming in. Looks like the Wildcats going to put together a pretty good program this year. Interesting to see. I think we're all uh, curious, all of us around the conference who follow basketball, curious to see Steve Alford did a tremendous job at New Mexico. And then Steve just did a fabulous job in a place where they love basketball, but he really cemented that program on the national scene and now it comes to UCLA where there's turnover again in players and I think that's a little bit of the wild card until you start seeing them play some games not too many returnees. I, I would love to see UCLA great it's I think it's good when UCLA basketball is great I'd like to see Polly Pavilion get raucous that the, to me the difference that the UCLA doesn't have that all the they don't have a home a, real, a great home court Paul, Pauly can be quiet sometimes. They need to get that thing rocking again. That'd be fun. Very Jake Locky out here for Oregon. With four and a half to play. Go, go. Go, go. Big burst inside for Oregon by Ayala Ford. So, well, Utah, one thing that has, I think we've seen now, you could say that the introduction of Dennis Erickson there has made a big difference in offense. Utah can score some points. They're, they're up in points, they're up in passing yards, they're up in rushing yards. So everything going right for their offense, they're getting better and better now. Came just a little, little short against UCLA, but a big test net. Stanford. Yeah. And Washington State got their fourth win today. Now Cal, Cal's defense is obviously outmanned in just about every game we play. But still, 
Good job. The biggest shock to me in the Washington State Cal game today, you saw how many yards passed the door. They didn't run 200 plays. I would have guaranteed you before the today, what was that? They would have combined to run 200 plays. They ran about 185. At some point, they decided they might run the ball. Right at the top of the right at the top of the show, we talked about the efficiency of Oregon, and when you, and of course, Coach McIntyre said it. It's first and second down, first and second down, touchdown. Yards per play on first down and second down tonight. Look at the first down conversions. 14 of their 20 conversions came on first down, or 28 conversions, excuse me, and nine came on second. That's impressive. 23 of their first downs came on first and second down. It's hard to beat a team if they never go to third down. <laughs> Chad Delaney with the reception for Oregon. Mark Elfords taking a look at that clock. It's just under three minutes now. I mean, it is, and it's funny, when you look at the breakdowns, and, and Sam Polis had that for us this week, that, you know, Oregon runs a lot of fourth downs. We've always known that. But they don't, they don't run it over, but it's a third. Rocky with a keep using the wide side of the field. And runs out of bounds shy of the stick. So coming up when we're finished here in Boulder, heading back to our studios in San Francisco with Mike Gavin, crew for the State Farm Post Game Report. We'll look at everything that's happened during Saturday and a look ahead at the uh, Saturday night action, including Washington and Stanford. Second half of Arizona State at Notre Dame. Wow. That's not going to make it all the way. Ford is inside the 15. Recovery from the weak side by Hunter. Harrison Hunter, a junior defensive back to save the touchdown after a 40-yard game. Some good speed, good effort by the defense to close and not allow him to get all the way there. Well, that last couple of plays has put Oregon over 700 yards tonight. And they're closing in on 100. They've run 93 plays. Remember when 300 yards was a big deal? Oh, it was, right, exactly. That's a good half now. Yeah. Boy, times have changed on the offensive output. And yet, the Oregon run, and coming into the game tonight, Glenn, the Oregon run pass, we talk about this a lot, and it's fascinating. Their run pass this year, 48 run, 52 pass, and that's, the last couple of years has been 60-40. Right, pass. right, yeah, they're more balanced. They're still running almost 50% of the plays. But 30 first downs tonight, just every, we consider, numb your head with numbers. Ford is down just shy, but the one, the one that really matters is, again, this Oregon doesn't kick field goals. I mean, yeah, I mean, you want to cut baseball football down to its absolute essence? They don't kick field goals. They'll score touchdowns. Score touchdowns, go for it on fourth. Try to not punt if they can help it. Again, Colorado had Colorado in the first half tonight, and there's no pretension here that, it, that they could have changed the outcome. But it would be interesting to watch if Colorado had been able to score on a red zone trip or two, not have to settle for field goals. If they've been able to put some balls in the end zone, how that could have, you know, if the game's a little closer going to the half, how that might have turned out, you never know. But Oregon renders a move because, again, they score touchdowns, and they scored eight of them tonight. And it just seems talk of efficiency, but it's it's like watching a, a storm surge of the ocean. It's wave after wave after wave. It doesn't stop. Yeah. And, and obviously, and everybody, I'm sure, listening say, come on, it's not that easy to score touchdowns. And we know that. You're right. It's the problem is that Oregon does it, so the standard they force you to play at is ridiculously high. They put the pressure on you and your offensive coordinator to match pace. If you can match pace correctly, not many can. And I 
give Colorado a lot of credit tonight, Glenn. I really think we were impressed the way they came out and played. Offside kick. A lot of credit. Reverse pass. Yep. Takes some shots down the field. They came out loose and wanting to make plays. And they made a lot of plays early. Unfortunately, they just, as you said, red zone, taking field goals. Too many negative plays with a couple of interceptions in there. Ultimately, uh, took them out of it. Yeah, they took some shots to make some things happen, and they did. They had a, the reverse touchdown pass of 75 yards, a long ball, another one to Paul Richardson. Side kick play, defense take away, all of that early, and they were in the mix, but eventually by halftime, Mariota, who now, by the way, has gone 202 pass attempts without an interception. 202. <laughs> One of the main amazing numbers. Let's hear now from Oregon coach Mark Helfrich. Drea. Thanks, Ted. Coach, at halftime, you told me that in spite of the lead, the team was not playing up to Oregon standards. How do you think they closed out this game? Okay. You know, okay. Um, obviously, defensively, I thought we had a little bit more urgency in the second half. Uh, a couple special teams units. We, we just need to, you know, like everybody, we need to improve. Uh, but really happy with our guys. Just, just approach their effort, their mentality, and we'll have another chance to, to, to get ready for next for the next one. What's the biggest thing that you guys can build on from this game as you head into a highly anticipated matchup next week against Washington? Well, I think we're building on everything. You know, I think we, we uh, t turn the ball over three times with our second and third team. That's that's unacceptable. You know, those guys have a chance to play and a chance to kind of put themselves on film and, and, and you know, get some real life play. And that's not what, you, not what you want from a result. But we'll build on all that and we'll just keep getting better. What do you think of the way Marcus distributed the ball today through the air and on the ground? Well, we think Marcus, Marcus is a special guy. He's, he's, you know, I don't know where he, he lies nationally. That's not my job. But, but we wouldn't trade him for anybody. I know that. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. Best of luck next week. Let's send it back to Ted and Glenn. Thank you, Coach. Coach knows he has a special guy quarterback at a special night again. Marcus Mariota throws for 355 and five touchdowns. Byron Marshall runs for 122, and Oregon rolls up 57 again and sends themselves into a much anticipated showdown next week in Seattle. For Glenn Drea and our entire terrific Pac-12 Network team, I'm Ted Robinson from Boulder. Now we send it back to our studio and Mike Yan for the State Farm Post Game Report.